Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I'll be showing you how to use some of the image manipulation controls that you have available to you in the Mental Ray Photographic Exposure Control toolset. That seems like kind of a mouthful and it's a little bit complicated, but once you've seen me kind of use it in action, you'll understand how to use this tool and, and when to use it. So take a look at this render here. It's just a teapot inside of a, a box with two walls to give us a little bit of contrast. And I threw in some spheres because that looks cool. So the issue here is that I am not using any exposure control at all. And you see how we're getting a little bit too much saturation. We're getting some blown out highlights in the back wall. And beyond that, we just don't have any control over how this lighting is going around the scene. So let's kind of rein in our lighting, take control. I'm going to go up to rendering and exposure control. And I'm using photometric lights. And normally when you create a photometric light, Studio Max will ask you if you want to use exposure control. And you'll usually say yes. But let's take a render and see what it looks like now that we use the exposure control. So you can see now that all of a sudden the contrast is gone, the highlights have been pushed back, the low lights have been brought up, and the whole image looks like it's just been out in the rain. So what we need to do is take control here and pull out and push out what we want. So for starters, I want to bring back a little bit more of this illumination. I want my highlights back. So I'm going to scroll down to the image control group right here. And I'm just going to bring up those highlights, let's say to 0.4. Let's see what that looks like. OK, so it's a little bit brighter. That's what we wanted. So now we need to fix those midtones keep this from looking so washed out. And you can keep an eye right here on this curve because that tells us the progression from dark to light. So I'm going to turn my midtones down, darken up this image a little bit. I'm going to put it at 0.6. Let's go ahead and render that again. Okay, good. We're starting to get some of that realism back. Um, now how about those shadows? Let's kind of darken this up a little bit, kind of like our original scene. So I want my, my shadows just a little bit darker. I'm going to Bring this up to 0.35, and let's give that another render. Wonderful, this is looking great. And you can see again just how much control we have over what we're doing. We're keeping a lot of this saturation, we're pushing values around, and making sure that the final render is exactly what we want. And these are things that you can't necessarily do in post work either, because when you're finally in Photoshop, you've already lost this fidelity on this back wall, for example. You would not be able to repair this easily. So we're fixing it at the source. So this is looking pretty good. I don't think I would, uh, I don't think I'd actually change anything else. I might di darken up these shadows just a little bit more. Okay. And then looks like I already had my color saturation edited. So you'd be able to adjust the saturation of the colors using this spinner right here. And of course you have other options here as well, like the white point. So you're able to, to sort of balance out the overall tinting of the image, etc. cetera, vignetting but I won't go into that. Let's go ahead and apply this to the entire render and that'll finish things up. And there you have it. That's how you can get fine grain control over the lighting in your scene using Mental Ray Photographic Exposure Control. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads on my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.